Hello, good morning. Kerry from The Soup Coach here. It's part eight of the Dog and I Vampire Diaries. Um, I'm up at the workshop quite early today because we've got loads of building work going on opposite and it's really noisy and it's actually for September in the UK incredibly hot. So um, yeah, I'm here early. So uh, episode eight, we're probably on about week 11 or 12. Um, I'd like to Let's say it would be all done and dusted, but we're still plodding on, but we've made so much progress. So I'm just going to crack on and tell you what's been happening. So last time I talked to you, I was waiting for my packaging still for my human range of soaps, um, getting a bit frustrated because I hadn't arrived. It did arrive eventually. It did take oh, probably two weeks, but to be honest, it's, it's a logo personalised printing um, recipe paper, so it's to be expected, I guess. But anyway, so... I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you a sneak peek on that. So my human soaps, I'm going to be wrapping in a greaseproof paper, which is logo printed. Um, this is from a company called Brandit, who do greaseproof paper and other products for, for food, really. But it was perfect for my needs. Now, they do all sorts of sizes, and I really, really wanted A5 so that I didn't have to faff around get cutting bigger sheets up all the time, because for me, a big thing is about making things as quick and easy as possible. So, um, I've got that done. You have to order a minimum of 2,000 sheets when it's the A5 size, um, but it's not too bad. It works out about 6p a sheet. I think it cost me about £118 altogether, um, and I'm sure I'll get through those quite quickly, so that wasn't too much of an issue for me at all. Um, this is a, a mock-up of my human soap and how it's going to be labelled. So you can see I've wrapped it in the greaseproof paper, which is logoed, and I've made up a belly band to go round it. I'm, this isn't quite how it's going to be, I don't think. I'm going to tweak it a little bit more. But just to give you an idea of how it looks, it's great because you can still smell the soap through there, which is what I wanted. I know you can't see it, but mine are not particularly fancy in design, so that's not too much of an issue. Um, and it protects it, and it keeps the scent in a bit longer, and it looks good on the shelf. So that is a sneak peek of the human soaps. I'm really pleased with the paper, the greaseproof paper, and how that's come out. And I might well be able to use it for um, wrapping some of my other products when they're not in the tins, but I'll, I'll have a little think about that. Um, the dog product labels are all printed. They've been delivered to me. I've made up some samples and sent them all off to Kerry from Fur and Fables, who's doing my brand photography for me. So she should have those and she'll be working on those in September. And then when I've got my human soap labels, which are still in the pipeline at the moment, I've approved the sort of first draft. Then once I've got those, I can make up some products and get those sent up to her as well for her to do all of that photography. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, from a dog products point of view, um, this is my, I can't remember if I showed you on a previous video, I don't think I did. So this is my labels for my soaps. So I've, what I've done with these, with the belly bands in Canva, is instead of having um, a separate wrapping, because I wanted to make it look different from the dog soaps, I've printed the logo onto the belly bands, which I think works really well. Um, so each of these have a different colour scheme at the front, but they've all got the same kind of watercolour effect um, across the whole brand, so there's quite a lot of continuity there. Um, and I'm not showing you all the products, because I've got to keep something secret for my launch, don't I? But this is uh, the Pore Balm, and this is probably the plainest one out of all of them, so that's why you're only seeing this one. So again, oh, I'll keep it straight, you can see that there's the, the watercolour effect on there, um, everything's on there, um, and my, my aim really is for... A, the whole range to have a common theme all the way through. So the common theme for this will be the watercolour sort of effect right the way through because the colours differ across the products. But also, if it was all together on a shop shelf somewhere, it's really impactful and it will stand out quite a lot. And because a lot of my business is based on wholesale, that was really quite important for me. So that was the reasoning behind um, how I've done it, how I've done it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so um, doo -doo -doo, what else, what else, what else? The other thing that's been going on, I've spent so much time on admin, um, and I touched on it in the last video with writing out all the PIF files, etc., etc. My next task has been starting to write the website copy, and that is 
a huge task in itself because I wanted to do a really good job of it. Now, for me, product descriptions are quite a biggie. Um, I've just been reading. I, I, I mean, for me, I wrote my product descriptions out before I read a book that I've read this week. So I've been reading um, Stephen Bartlett's book. It's just the 33 Laws uh, in Life and Business. And it's really, really good. Highly recommend it. Um, but one of the laws, I can't remember which law it comes under, but it's around product framing. And it's so true because how you describe your products will have a big impact onto whether somebody buys it or not. Um, there's a lot of psychology and things behind it. And obviously, I'm not an expert in all of that. But for me, a product description will have a big impact on whether I decide to buy, a, buy that product or service. Um, so for me, I wanted my soaps to really sound great and give people a reason to buy them. Um, and the way Stephen describes it in his book, it's not about making your product something that it isn't. It's, um, it's just about framing. So the, one of the examples he uses is if you were to buy um, a product that's 10% fat or 90% lean, which product description would, would you lean towards more? And it would probably be the 90% lean if it was a, a mince, for example. Um, and it's not lying, it's, it's describing it as it is, but it's framing it in a way which makes it sound more attractive, which is what sales and marketing is all about. Um, so for this, I'm just going to give you an idea on how I did it, because I, I do use ChatGPT um, to a degree, but I'm not a big fan of it. For I would never get it to write lots of things for me, because I've got to the point now where I can look at some copy that somebody's written, and I'll know whether it's been written by ChatGPT or AI, because the wording is just so similar. It's all about embracing and... Yeah, so any, any descriptions you see about embracing, um, oh, I can't think now, I'm having a mental block. Um, we'll come back to it. It's not important. It's not really relevant. But my point being that descriptions, um, copy written on um, AI, unless you change it a lot, they all begin to sound the same. Um, and I really didn't like that. So let me just share my screen with you. Oh. Helps if I change it onto there first, doesn't it? So how I've used ChatGPT is GPT is I've got so I've already given my products names. I've got Coast, Earth, Breeze, and Zest, um, and each of those has their set essential oils. So I've had that that thing to start off with. I had that as a description to start off with, but I just needed a little bit of help around. Um, how to describe each one, um, and I've used my essential oils, really, to help me with that. And what I've done is um, basically told ChatGPT what I've got. My spellings are ter terrible, but it seems to be able to read it anyway. So I put, um, I've got a soap called Earth, which is made with patchouli and cedarwood essential oils. Can you write an engaging product description for me? Now, chat being chat, um, it goes off on a complete tangent and writes these really long, wordy descriptions, which are completely over the top for me. It, I mean, you might like it, I, I don't. Oh, it's listening to me now. Oh, <laughs> let me tell it not to listen. Go away, chat. Um, it's because I've, I, I talk to it a lot rather than type. So anyway, I have asked it for a description. It's come up with this very long-winded uh, method and going back to the wording that you'll see you can recognize it a mile off so step into a world of natural indulgence with our earth soap crafted with position and care this soap embodies the essence of simplicity and self-care that is chat gpt all over and it will give everybody the same kind of descriptions so indulgence crafted embodies essence anything that's got that in it it's probably been written by um, ai but what i wanted was a couple of descriptions for the essential oils. So it's come up with it in here, patchouli known for its earthy grounding scent, uh, warm and woody notes of cedarwood. Um, and really, that's, that's all I wanted from it. It's just a little, little bit of inspiration for my description, and then I would do the rest. So again, this is my description. Earth is all about relaxation and grounding with a duo of patchouli and cedarwood essential oils. Patchouli, known for its earthy grounding scent, relaxes the mind and is combined with the warm, woody notes of cedarwood, known for its calming and soothing benefits. Um, natural colorants, anatto powder and activated charcoal give earth its visual identity. So that is my description for my soap for earth. And then I've gone on and I've done the same with the other soaps. Um, so just to put that in perspective for you, 
Breeze. Breeze is all about energy and rejuvenation with an invigorating blend of spearmint, tea tree and eucalyptus. Fresh spearmint revitalises and energises, tea tree purifies the mind and eucalyptus refreshes and wakes up all the senses. So some of that I've taken from ChatGPT and I've ignored all of the rest of that it gives me about um, embodying this and embracing that because it's just, it's just too much. Um, so that's how I've written my product descriptions and that's how I've used AI to do that for me. So I do all the writing, I just get a little bit of inspiration from there. So hopefully, if you're struggling with writing descriptions, that will give you a bit of an idea on how you can use AI to help you do yours as well. Um, and then what I've done is I'm going to be um, putting a pop couple of offers in there. So for example, a four slope stack, they'll be getting 15% off code. Um, and then I'll be linking within my product descriptions to bundles as well. Um, and this is a really good way of increasing your sales, upselling without too much effort, because once you've written all the, the descriptions, it's there. Um, and to be honest, if somebody doesn't know that you do a bundle, um, unless they search through your website, because you've got it in your product description here, especially if they're looking for a gift for somebody, it's very much, it's a lot easier for them to say, oh yeah, that's a good idea, I didn't think of that, or I didn't realise they did that. Um, you've got a link to a bundle there, which they can buy all in one go, spend a bit more money with you and increase your average sales. So um, yeah, that's taken me, I mean, that took me a long time because obviously I've done that for each of the soaps and then I've done it for all my other products as well, although to a degree I could pull some of the text across. Um, and to be honest, that's probably, I'm just thinking, that's probably most of what I've done on the dog and I for the moment. Um, I'm... Next, next job is waiting for the human labels to come through. Um, oh, well, me and my son did come up here last week. We've made lots of the human products, just a, a small amount of each to get us started. So um, just looking at my list, we've made shampoo bars, body butter, conditioner bars, and lotion bars for all of them. Um, I've just got a couple outstanding, which I'm actually, well, I won't be able to do it today, but... Um, they won't take too long to make. So, um, yeah, the making is pretty much there, she says. <laughs> um, and, and once I've got my labels, I'll be able to get those all labelled up as well. Um, I'm beginning to think, I know I've still got a lot to do. I've still got to do um, all the, finish off the website copy, set all that up, do my wholesale catalogue. Um, I'm not here for a week next week, so that will put me back a bit. And obviously, I'm planning on my soap coach stuff as well. So... I'm probably aiming for an October launch, I think, um, but I'm not, I'm, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I can't wave a magic wand, so I'm not going to worry too much about it, but obviously I would have liked to have got going for Christmas. I will get going for Christmas, definitely. Anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you. Any questions, pop it in the comments below. Hopefully you found that interesting, and I will be back. It'll be two weeks, because I'm not here next week. Um, yeah, I'll hope, hopefully speak to you again soon.